I work at the School of Earth Sciences in the University of Bristol, where I'm a paleontologist. This means that I study fossils, which are the remains of plants and animals that lived millions of years ago. But I'm actually kind of a weird paleontologist because I don't specialize in any particular type of animal, like a dinosaur or a fossil insect. Um, instead, I'm actually really interested in how fossils form in the first place. So I'm interested in everything that happens from the moment an animal dies um, to you know what happens when it gets buried, what happens when it's brought back up to the Earth's surface and is finally found when somebody splits the rock open um, by, by a geologist or someone else. So I'm interested in all the different processes that you know, go on that turn a living animal into a hard, resistant piece of rock. I wasn't always sure that I'd become a scientist. I remember when I was in school, I was interested in lots of things as well as science. I was interested in, in English and in art and in music and in sport. And, you know, when somebody told me that at university you could only study one thing, I thought this was awful. Um, but I suppose what pulled me towards science in the end was the fact that I'm really interested in how the natural world works. Um, I remember as a child, myself and my sister and cousins, we used to go out on hunts for insects and I used to love looking at books with pictures of the solar system and volcanoes and things like that. Um, so I suppose in the end, you know, that's what probably, you know, drove me to pick science subjects in school. And then I remember I loved learning about geography and rocks and the landscape. So in the end, I chose to do earth sciences at college and um, it turned out to be completely the right decision for me. Things I like doing um, as part of my job. Um, probably my two favorite things are uh, using, the, using electron microscopes to study fossils in really fine detail and doing experiments. And um, what I like about the electron microscope is, is that it's a, it's a really kind of high tech technique. You're taking tiny pieces of a fossil and you're zapping them with a beam of electrons um, that's traveling at 99.999% the speed of light. And um, you're actually using this, the energy of the electrons to look at tiny, tiny structures that are way smaller than the human hair. Um, and uh, so you're probably looking at stuff that no one has seen before. Um, and as well as that, it's really exciting to actually use it because there are lots of buttons and knobs and things to press. So you feel like you're driving a spaceship or something. Um, and there's also, you know, there's always a real element of surprise with the SEM. You never really know what you're going to find. Um, and that's probably the reason why I like doing experiments as well. Because, you know, no matter how well you plan out your experiment, um, once it's running, you always get some weird results. Um, you always get something that you don't expect. And so that's, that's really exciting as well. The least fun aspect, um, I suppose I'm a pretty impatient person and I like being able to make plans. And I don't like when my plans actually go to plan. So um, what really, I suppose, what really annoys me um, in my research is when equipment breaks down. You might have a plan to do a particular type of analysis for the month of April. Um, but if your equipment breaks down, you're stuck. You have to call a technician, you have to wait for new parts, you have to wait for the machine to be checked and you know to all get calibrated again. It can delay your research by a month or more. So, you know, that's a real pain when it happens. Probably the weirdest things that I've done in my work relate to frogs in some way or another. I used to work on fossil frogs during my PhD and, you know, I did lots of weird things. I threw them into barrels of water to see how they sank and I, you know, stretched out their legs to see their range of motion. But probably the weirdest thing ever was the day I got a dead frog sent to me in the post. Um, this 
this is this was pretty weird but it was actually it was actually really bad timing because when it arrived I was away on field work it arrived in July and it was delivered to the coffee room of the department so this meant while I was gone this box with a dead rotting frog was sitting in the departmental coffee room where people were trying to eat their lunch um, by the end of the first week um, there was a pretty bad smell. People tracked it down to the box, um, opened it, got an awful shock when they realised what was inside, threw it in the freezer, and I got a very cross email from one of the staff members saying, Maria, there's something you have to sort out when you get back from your field work. Most of my spare time is actually taking up with doing things that a two-year-old likes. I have a two-year-old son. So uh, we tend to spend a lot of time jumping into puddles and making a mess and splashing water everywhere, playing with tractors, that kind of thing. Um, when I have some free time for myself, I like to go running and playing other sport, badminton, yoga. Uh, I like to just hang out with friends, go to the cinema, that kind of thing. <laughs>